Eight. Hello? Hello? We are live! Hello. Welcome to episode 123 of the Beastly Thought Show. Beastly can't be joining us. He is uh, busy saving um, uh, small children Harambe. from alligators Many in Harambe's. Florida. Um, and cannot be interrupted. It's just too, Im <laughs> too important a job to interrupt. So it's going to be me and Robbie match. tonight. Hey. Robbie, how you doing? I am doing Hello. awesome, my friend. Hello. I am so glad to see you. It has been a couple weeks since I've been on, and I'm so glad to be back. I too really long, am. right? Too long. Yes, too long. Well, what have you been up to in the last couple of weeks? Uh, seeing family, you know, looking for yeah. a job again because I'm out of employment once again but ah, the job you know, search. Life goes on. yeah life goes on man so you know, <laughs> this week i'm gonna start looking and things should be good nice nice i, I hope yeah. all your family is doing well yep. you've been doing any gaming uh somewhat this week definitely i've been playing uh the titanfall 2 beta for the most part been playing that again seeing the changes they've made right and that's live people... this weekend again right yeah this will be the final weekend before the game comes out and i know a lot of people aren't really happy with it because it's a lot different from titanfall one you know, it is a lot different isn't it paste and it's not as fun i really like it though i yeah. think it's still a lot of fun i think they have a long ways to go with it definitely i wish there was a little bit more of an emphasis on the mobility but i think as far as the titans go things are more varied there are more weapons so i still really like this game a lot so i, I haven't gotten great. a chance to play it yet robbie but i am looking forward to playing it because i love titanfall it just yeah you know just the long tail of it didn't it, it didn't allow me to progress or feel a sense of progression. So I just kind of I lost interest in it after a while. Uh, but I'm really yeah. excited for not only a sequel to Titanfall, which is a game I did love, uh, a single-player component to it, which I think the world definitely deserves. But the multiplayer was fun. Talk to me about the multiplayer. You played it a little bit. There's now a mechanic where you have a uh, grappling hook. Um, they yep. slow down the rate at which you can get your Titans, right? Mm -hmm. But then they also increased that after uh, feedback from the first week. Oh, okay. So they you get you get them faster this week than you did last week. Yeah, because if you remember in Titanfall One, it was basically like that meter would progress on its own, and if you got kills, that meter would progress faster. So everyone had a chance to get a Titan. The way it worked in the first week of the uh, technical test was it was more of a kill streak. Like the meter itself would yeah. not move. You had to get kills to charge that thing. Now they've made it so I think every five seconds it goes up a little bit. So you don't just have to get kills. I remember that being a complaint from the first one was that the COD players or the COD community that came over to check it out said, why does everybody get one of these? Shouldn't it be, be a kill streak? Like, and I kind of felt the same it. and they changed it. And then I don't know. It's a different world. It feels like since overwatch, since destiny, like, it feels like, you know, the way to get casual gamers into your game is to give everybody super-powered, you know, tools, right? And uh, Titanfall definitely had that in the first one, then they took it away in the first test. Now they're giving yeah. it back. You like it better now, or you like it worse, or? As far as how fast the Titan recharges? Yeah. I don't know. I know a lot of people weren't happy about it, so that's why... Like, they changed it. They said, all right, we're going to make it basically a kill streak. And then people said, we're not happy with that. They said, all right, we'll change it back to the way it was. I mean, I like it better. I like having more Titans on the ground. I feel like the Titans are what makes Titanfall stand out from, you know, Call of Duty and Destiny. and all. Yeah, I, sure. That's what I like about Titanfall. Yeah. So for me, that's great. But I know a lot of people were maybe not necessarily happy about that. Like, some people liked where it was, you know, less Titans all the time and just not as chaotic. I, I will say this, by the time like I was wrapping up my time with Titanfall, I really was playing pretty much only, and this got introduced later, I'm not crazy, I, I don't think it was there at launch, but later on, they gave us a pilot versus pilot mode, Yep. and that's ended up being where I like to spend most of my time, the Titans were fun at first, but they felt like gimmicky toward the end. How does it actually piloting a Titanfall, a Titan feel? That's, I think, one of the best improvements of Titanfall 2. The Titans are much better in this game because there's two Titans to choose from. There is Ion, which is basically like he's your machine gun type Titan. He's a big gun. He fires. He shoots like this electricity, and he has a big laser that comes out of his chest too. Mm -hmm. Then the other Titan is called Scorch. He's basically like a fire-based Titan. He has this massive cannon that shoots like this big one shot at people, and he can like slam fire down across the ground. They're both varied, and they're both really different play styles, which is probably mm -hmm. my favorite thing about 
Titanfall 2 so far is the Titans feel unique. Like, they're different play styles. Yeah. Really like that. Uh, how does it feel when you are in a Titan and there's a bunch of pilots around? Do you feel like you can defend yourself against pilots, or do you feel like you're basically a sitting duck? Well... As far as my experiences go, I feel like the Titans are very powerful. I know people have also said that the Titans feel like they're weaker in this game compared to the first one. Like, mm -hmm. it's easier to take them down. I think they're probably right about that, but I still feel like as a Titan, you feel powerful. Like, you definitely feel like a tank. You feel crazy good. But, of course, the pilots still have a very fair chance. You know, you have your anti-Titan weapons, you have your grenade launcher, you have all kinds of different weapons to take them down. So I think it's just very well-balanced which they also nailed in the first game. All right. Yeah. You been playing anything else besides Titanfall? Not really. I just haven't been gaming that much this week. I don't know. Taking it's been a, kind of slow in releases. Taking a break. You know, it's funny you say that because I've been actually thinking, now that Rise of Iron is coming out, the new expansion for Destiny, I've kind of yes. been thinking, you know, is it about time for me to take a little bit of a break? Like, just kind of relax, give myself a, a refresher. And that's kind of what I, I've been thinking about all week. And then... The problem is, is that there's always this carrot on a stick in Destiny for me. There's always something out there that I want. Last week, it was Finalis Peril, like a, the Iron Banner hand cannon that I really yeah. wanted a good roll on. So I played a ton of Iron Banner, hoping to get a really good roll on this hand cannon. I got one, and it's awesome. It's just nice. it's amazing. It's got Icarus, so it's got better accuracy from the air. It's got Outlaw, so it just reloads super fast. And uh, it's got extra range on it so it's just like it's a badass hand cannon it's the best hand cannon i've had since year one so for the last year it's by far the best hand cannon i ever had yep. this this week the nightfall was um oh, i can't remember the name of the strike the undying mind which has a chance to drop another hand cannon that is basically a year two version of the fate bringer everybody knows fate bringer is like Ooh, the yep. hand cannon from year one right uh, so I really wanted a good roll on that. So I've been playing a lot of I've been playing a lot of Destiny. Even though I said, okay, just take take a break, relax a little bit on Destiny. You know you're gonna go hard in Destiny on September 20th, right? Real hard. We all are. I'm yeah. just I figured, okay, just you know, relax a little bit. Maybe play a little No Man's Sky, which we'll talk about later. Uh, maybe you know, just just relax a little bit. But all I've been doing is playing some Destiny. In fact, right before I got on with you. Uh, we were playing in the Crucible and having a blast in the Crucible. So it's just like, you know, Robbie, I can't get away from this game. It's like this un unbeatable addiction for me. It's the dragon. Yeah. It's the dragon, man. I'm chasing that dragon. I can't can't catch it, though. <laughs> Absolutely, Briar. I mean, as far as it goes, I love your passion for the game. I really do. I think you're enthusiastic and you're a huge fan, and it shows. And as far as the content you create too with Planet Destiny and on YouTube, you do a phenomenal job. And I love to see that passion and energy from you. I love it. Oh, thank you, Robbie. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun playing Destiny. And you know, it, it does help. I was just playing with a bunch of guys um, on the PlayStation 4 and we were just having a ball. We we're cracking jokes and you know, any kind of multiplayer game. It's look at my webcam, which is completely fucked up. <laughs> oh, what happened? Everybody I don't know. Like My screen. webcam and Skype just don't mix. But yeah, I mean, it's just like the community of Destiny. You know, Destiny. I don't know if you know this, Robbie, but Destiny, the Destiny community con con live charity stream just raised half a million dollars. I heard for St. Jude's, which is yeah. insane, man. It it was. I mean, this community is insane, and it's it's such a pleasure to be a part of. Unfortunately, I didn't actually get to go to the con. Um, but hopefully next year I will get to go. I know a lot, of, a couple of guys in chat were there. Uh, I think Director and JB Mega, who are both in chat right now, both went, and yeah. I can't wait to talk to them about how, what their experience was. But man, what an amazing community! It's just so, so fulfilling. I completely agree with you. I think the Destiny community is probably one of the most positive in gaming. Like I know. It's definitely easy to see a lot of negativity right out of the gaming community, out of YouTube and things like that. But I think there are a lot of really good, kind people, especially in Destiny. People are just passionate about this game and they want to see the best for it. And I think that's amazing. I think more communities need to be like the Destiny community. Like, I totally agree with you on that. Absolutely. So, we got any news for this week? Do we got any news for this week, baby? We got we some got, news. We got news? <laughs> yeah. Hey man, you got any of that news for me? Get out of my head! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All 
right, you ready? Let's get into it. Oh, I'm ready. I was born ready. All right. So the first news we got this week is that several leaks this week have all but confirmed the existence of the PS4. A smaller and thinner version of PS4. Source on sale shortly after revealing the 7th during the PlayStation event. But you lagged out a little bit, but I assume you said PS4 Slim, right? Yes. I'm uh, disappointed in what I've seen so far from this thing. Me too. Um, I got to be honest with you. As would, far as the design, I don't. It's not. Good. I don't care about the design. Uh, what What I care about is you know the Xbox One S just launched, right? It's got a 4K Blu-ray player. It's got 4K streaming. PS4 Slim does it have any of that? No. Apparently not. That's a disappointment in my eyes, man. Like if I'm gonna, if I'm going, if I'm looking at, do I want to buy a new console right now? And I got a 4K TV, or I'm planning on upgrading to a 4K TV. The Xbox One S presents a much better value to me, and yeah. future upgrade-wise, with the Scorpio coming out next year, like all the games I buy for my Xbox One S are going to be playable on that. Yeah. Like it just the Xbox ecosystem just looks a lot more attractive to me overall. I completely agree with you. I think with the Xbox One S, we saw huge improvements. Like, it's one of the cheapest 4K Blu-ray players there is, and you're getting a yeah. great console out of that. Yeah. You know, it's well redesigned. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it's it faster of... than the old Xbox One. Yeah. Actually, no, it's made a lot of big improvements. Whereas yeah. this PS4 Slim, from what we know, it's really nothing but a slimmer PS4. And honestly, it doesn't even look that good to me. Like, I just wasn't impressed by the design. And that's, I know that's not the most important thing, but even under the hood, there's nothing technically about this that is really better than the current ps4 so i don't know where the market for this is but yeah especially the neo coming like what's the point yeah it better be cheap that's what i'm saying very cheap i am looking forward to their event is it september 9th or september 8th that their event is seventh seventh, seventh. okay so i'm looking forward to the event because i want to see i do want to see if the maybe the ps4 slim will out of nowhere come out with a blu-ray uh, Ultra HD Blu-ray and 4K streaming. I would love to see that. If it doesn't have that, I'm not buying one. Um, but I do want to see what they're going to do with the Neo. Like we've heard these rumors about the Neo since way before E3. Like, is this thing going to be what we've what we've heard it's going to be? And if it is, how are they going to compete with the Scorpio next year? Agreed. Yeah. Especially, how does that system change before? And after the Scorpio reveal, like how does Sony yeah. react to that and change the Neo based on that, which I'm very interested to see. Sony's actually in a place of power right now. Like right now, because they have not re they have not released any details about the Neo, they're actually in a place of power. Is they could delay the Neo, you know, make it at, make it wait until 2017 and release it at parity or with more power than what the Scorpio is saying. I don't know if they're going to do that because I feel like if they release the Neo, they're shooting themselves in the foot, to be honest with you. I don't see I don't see the Neo as a good idea. As excited as I was before E3 to hear about the Neo, after E3 and the, the announcement of the Scorpio, I was like, what do I want with a, you know, a 1.5X PlayStation or 2X PlayStation when I could get 6X the performance if I wait until the Scorpio comes out? Yeah, Scorpio is like pretty much a whole new system like that is a huge leap whereas neo is like a much smaller leap at least from what we know of course it's not confirmed but yeah scorpio is just way more exciting to me too but i'm definitely interested to see what their approach is with neo how the messaging is and what they say about it like it's yeah. definitely going to be yeah important on how they message this thing it is interesting it's an interesting time very interesting man this hasn't happened in a long time in games ever like, this, is, I, this is the first time this has ever happened it's this halfway upgrade cycle thing. This is a completely new right. experience. I think you're right. Yeah, there's been similar upgrades in the past with like Sega Genesis and stuff, but this is a whole new territory for the most part. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. What else we got for news? Uh, speaking of the PS4 Slim, the DualShock 4 controller is reportedly being redesigned with the release of the unannounced PS4 Slim. This is exciting. Yeah. The controller will have a gray D-pad, face buttons, shoulder buttons, and thumbsticks. The controller will also have a small see-through area on the top of the touchpad for the light bar. Yeah, you missed the best part. 
The controller will plug into a PS4 using a USB cable and the inputs will go through that USB cable instead of being forced to go wireless. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I didn't so hear I, about that. I don't know if you have ever, ever had problems with your controller acting goofy on a PlayStation. Like I have, randomly input yeah. or super delayed inputs. But I've had that a ton on my PlayStation 4. And it's even though I really love the feeling of the controller and you know the way the controller rests in my hand, like I love the overall design of the controller. That is really sucks, man. That that really sucks. In the Xbox One, you know, if you're having problems with your wireless connectivity, you plug it in and it it automatically transfers all your inputs over to the cable. The PlayStation yeah. 4 controller, this new PlayStation 4 controller is gonna do that as well. And that to me is actually a huge change and the most important change to this controller. Uh, That's exciting. I didn't yeah, know I'm that. really excited about that. Wow. Hopefully, the durability gets better too. We all we've kind of beaten that to death, but yeah, I think it has gotten durable. better already. And hopefully, yeah, it does continue to get better. Um, I do kind of like that light bar on the top of the controller as well. Like being able to see the light bar, that's kind of cool. You know, some games have like they'll use the light bar as like you know a visual like it, as your health gets worse, it gets red or you know when yeah, you, but you can't see it really you can't see it unless you're playing in a dark room and it's like flashing off the floor or the wall in front of you you can't really see it so it's a wasted effect so at least if it's kind of at the top of the controller it'll kind of be shining at your face a little bit and that's kind of cool it's yeah, not a big deal though not a big deal it's nothing that they can't represent on the screen itself the bigger deal to me is the fact that it'll actually transfer the signal like your controller input over the cable to the PlayStation 4. And I believe that'll be compatible with, from what I understand, it'll be compatible with the Slim or the the old PlayStation 4. It's just, it's got to be a new controller though. So uh, not a good time to buy PlayStation controllers right now or a scuff. Like if you're waiting, if you're looking to buy a scuff or a PlayStation yeah. controller or whatever, uh, definitely hold off till this new PlayStation Slim version comes along because... You know, wired is the way to play. Straight up. Yeah. It it just is. Yeah, I think so. And I like that a lot of these changes are definitely small, but it sounds like it could be much needed improvements, which is great. Yeah. Because the design of this thing is awesome. Like I love the controller. Right. You definitely do. All right. Uh what's next? Oh, this is gonna be a bit of controversial. So Sony has announced this week that PlayStation Plus subscription prices will be increased starting on September 22nd to $59.99 US and $69.99 Canadian for one year. Three month subscriptions will now cost $24.99 US and $29.99 Canadian. Is that a $10 increase, right? $10 per year? Yes. Per year. Yep. What do you think? What do you think? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. They, they to I'll be honest with you, they should have just announced like uh because because we're adding this new feature or we've added like this new server farm, you know, like this more reliability, you know, like just announce some stupid feature that, you know, ten dollars, but I don't really care. You know, inflation is inflation. Things cost more money over time. I don't really care. What do you think? And Robbie's gone. We lost Robbie. He's locked up. Agreed. You know, the value of money, like, that's definitely important to keep in mind. And I think just. Oh, man. We're ripping. Oh, no. oh crap. All right. We're going to see if we can get Robbie back. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hang up on him and call him back. This is not good. Oh, crap. So we hung up on him, and we'll call him back and see if that works out for us. Sorry about this, guys. A little technical difficulty here. Rip Canada. <laughs> uh, for those of you who watch the show on YouTube, we do record it live on, uh, on Twitch, and uh, the chat is hilarious. Silent Doom, how you doing? King of Pablo. Uh, director, I want to get with you about what you're talking about right now. Oh boy. Now we can't get a hold of him at all. There we go. 
There we go. There's Robbie. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Everything just dropped all at once. But hopefully things will be fine now. Um, Yeah, as far as PlayStation Plus pricing, here's what I'll say. I think, you know, I don't have a huge issue with this just because my biggest problem with this is just because you have to pay for online. You know what I mean? Like, you have to pay for PlayStation Plus. You have to pay for Xbox Live to play online. I think that's my biggest problem with this is just because it's forced. You know, I think... It should be free like Steam to play online. There's no reason that it shouldn't be, and they know they can just get this money out of you. That's why they force you to pay for it, which It sucks, used to but. be free, um, and it was a significantly worse experience than playing on Xbox Live that you know was a paid service. And I've You're actually right. never had problems paying on paying Xbox, my Xbox Live fee uh, because they did provide a pretty good service. It was reliable. You know, it, it was a good service. Meanwhile, PlayStation 3's network was up and down. It had all these security holes. It was rough. Once they started, I'll be honest with you, once they started charging for it, it's been mostly pretty good. Um, And I don't really have a problem paying for something I use so frequently. If I used it less, I might have an issue with it. Um, Or if I was, you know, if I didn't have as much money, then yeah, I'd probably have an issue with it too. PC is a different ecosystem. It'd be impossible, I think, to charge for a system like this on Xbox like Xbox Live or PSN on PC, just because there's so much competition. Um, Could be. You're right. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. You know, I don't really have a problem with the $10 increase. I'd probably have a problem with it was $40 or $50. And I know that, you know, I know that that's not going to be everybody's opinion. I think they should have tried to just try to, you know, show us some benefit for why they are increasing it by $10. I think that would have help them out a little bit yeah that's true like you know it just seems like they're just doing this because they can but i think really what they're doing is they're increasing this price because now it's going to be the same price as xbox live gold that's why they're doing it Mm -hmm. i think that's why and yeah inflation you're definitely right because you know money money values go up and down over time so that's just a natural thing that's going to happen like costs will change yeah they also have the most popular network right now they have the most popular console right now going into this generation they're still trying to rep you know, show that they could do this, show, show that they were representing a value uh, compared to the Xbox One. Um, and I think they've showed that now, and it's like, okay, well, I mean, <laughs> why aren't right. we, yeah. you know? But, yeah. yeah. Next. Right. Next. Uh, what do we got next? The Witness is coming to Xbox One on September 13th. That was just announced, which is very soon. And yeah. I've heard amazing things about this game. You ever had a chance to play it? I haven't had a chance to play it. Uh, I don't know that I will, but it looks good. Yeah, I've heard nothing but like amazing things about The Witness, so I would be interested in giving it a shot, but you never know. All right, uh, this is going to be great. Battlefield 1's Season Pass has been announced and uh-huh. been detailed, so let me open this up. Hopefully the web browser will not crash. Please don't do that. Oh, boy. Oh, there we go. What the hell is going on here? (laughs) I'm sorry, Mike. What is going on with this? So they got a season pass. That's not to be... Okay. Okay. I got it. Yeah. All right. So season pass, well... At first, they said there wouldn't be a season pass, and then they lied. There is going to be one for $50. You include four major map packs. First, which will be called They Shall Not Pass, will be available in March 2017. And then uh, there's a bunch of them. Like, they'll introduce, like, the French army, make them playable, and stuff like that, and the Russian army. So, basically, they're including content that won't be available in the game from day one. Mm-hmm. It's a season pass. Oh, well. Uh, let's move on. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> All right. No Man's Sky player base has dropped by 90% on PC within two weeks of the game's launch. Did you hear about this? Yeah. Yeah, that's not surprising to me. Uh, you know, a lot has been said about how technically impressive that game is. And I'm actually still enjoying it. I know that that's not a... You know, I might be lying a little bit. Because I say that I'm t- still enjoying it, but I haven't actually played it. In like a week and a half. <laughs> that's what I said. So I'm like, it's a great game. I love it. 
I haven't played it in like a couple of weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know it's a cool game and it's it's fun when I do play it. I have fun, but there's no doubt that it is a very shallow game. You know, it's it's got you know it's it's wide open. You can go here, you can go there, uh, but once you actually get to these places, there's not a whole lot of stuff you can do at them. So. Uh, one planet feels much like the next planet. It's just visual, small visual differences you have between the two planets. Uh, looks like we've lost Robbie again. I'm really sorry about this, guys. We're having some major technical difficulties uh, with our internet today. So that's unfortunate. No man's time. OS worth it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm sorry. You know, again, uh, if you watch this on YouTube, it is awfully fun to watch this in chat. Uh, on stream, it might have to. Uh, I have to kill this podcast tonight. It's not. It's just not going well. Jimmy Pike, right? Ninety percent is a huge number, uh, uh, but it I'm makes so sense, sore. doesn't it? It's like you got you got this game that's you know you know this deep but this wide. Well, once you figure out that all those planets are kind of act exactly the same, there's not much you can do really. Um, I, I still enjoy that the actual physical act of exploring, but it's just there's not a whole lot of new stuff you find. You back, Robbie? Nah, he's not back. It's super, super repetitive, uh, Jimmy Pike. Yeah, I would agree with that. It is very repetitive. It looks cool. It feels cool. Uh, there's definitely gameplay improvements they can make to No Man's Sky, like uh, you know, ship battles don't feel particularly good. Aiming your Gun doesn't feel particularly good, but they essentially sold a playable concept. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, it is playable. It is a game. Um, there's no story or anything, really. <laughs> Screen grab his face, please. New emote. <laughs> oh, uh, at least I get to see the news. What's the news? <laughs> All right, No Man's Sky player base dropped by 90%. Got it. Rumored detachable controllers for Nintendo NX will reportedly feature both advanced vibration and motion, motion sensing capabilities. It is intended to be a replacement for the Wii Remote, remote Controller. For the Wii Remote Controller. That's interesting. I don't really understand what that means, to be honest with you. Detachable controllers... So the, the controllers for the NX are rumored to detach. It's, it's going to be like a tablet, right? And you put the controllers on the sides, and then you goof around with them that way. But you can take them off, too, and then dock the tablet and uh, play on the TV. I wonder if there's going to be a way to put those back together, or if you don't have to, you can play with them this way. That's interesting. All right, I'm going to call Robbie one more time. If we can't get him in here, we'll probably... Probably kill the show. Hello? Hey, Robbie. Uh, I'm back. Hey, I'm so sorry about this. I don't know what's going on. I Skype. Skype is like barely holding me right now. I'm yeah. so sorry. I just want to apologize to everybody and say it's I'm... It's not your I fault, man. Can't, we can't do anything about it. Like, it's just... It happens. So, I was just talking I mean, about I'm these really Wii controllers. Just, this, I don't know uh, what's going on. The story you have in the chat about the Wiimote controllers. Talk to me a little bit about this because I, I haven't heard anything about it. Is it these things are going to be like motion controllers? Yeah, the NX detachable controllers. Basically, it's supposed to be like um, a replacement for the Wiimote. They're thinking of phasing this out. It's going to have like advanced motion sensing. So mm -hmm. basically, the idea is like if you're playing a game, you get hit by like a sword, for example, it'll feel different than if you're hit by like someone punching you or something just for an example so mm -hmm. it'll be kind of like that they'll simulate like different uh motions like that but yeah i don't know like this is all rumor like we don't even know if the nx has detachable controllers like none of this is confirmed this thing is still not announced but definitely sounds interesting to me that they're just making another wiimote jimmy pike in chat is saying are these backward compatible will, will we be able to play wii games on this on this new nintendo nx I Good no answer. That's a... We actually haven't heard really anything. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. We haven't heard anything on backwards compatibility. Could be possible. I mean, Nintendo sure is a big um, a big player when it comes to that. So I wouldn't be surprised. 
but for now we just have no idea. All right. God damn it, Skype. I'm really upset right now. All right. Oh, we're getting through it. What's the next story, Robbie? Oh, that's silence. All right. Uh, last bit of news is about Resident Evil 7. Some new details were listed from the ESRB. If this link will open, please. Okay, there we go. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm having... I think the internet's starting to go down, too. I don't know what's yeah, going on. Yeah, it's... I can hardly hear you, it's Robbie. Shit. Okay, hold on. All right, here we go. This story comes courtesy to us of IGN. This is of them, just, you know, if you listen to Evil 7 have surfaced this week thanks to a premature listing by the ESRB. So the listing's been removed, uh, but not before, you know, people could basically grab a screenshot of it. So Resident Evil 7 will supposedly be played in first person. Players will use pistols, shotguns, flamethrowers, explosives, and chainsaws to kill mutant creatures. Uh, additionally, the listing notes that Resident Evil 7 featured cutscenes that will contain intense violence and gore, including instances in which a character's arm is by a chainsaw, a man's leg taken off of the knee with a shovel, and a character impaled through the face with a shovel. That sounds brutal. Sounds really, really crazy. I didn't catch any of that. <laughs> oh, I was thinking that like, the whole time. Oh. Man, I don't know what to do now. Yeah, it's just such a train wreck. We just got we got a Shut bad up. bad luck connection today. What can we say? Uh, it's you know when when it's one of three people, you can overcome it. But when it's one of two people, really kind of kills it. <laughs> what it's are you gonna do, up. man? All right, though, man. You know, not much we can do about it. I think we should call this one early. I really do apologize for the short stream for the uh, short show. Uh, we'll be back next week in full effect. Hopefully, all three of us will be back. Uh, but man, this connection is is a rough one tonight. I think we lost Robbie again. Yeah, I'm dropping in again. Are right. you? Must be cold in Canada with all that stream freezing. Yeah, what are you gonna do? So you go. Not much you can do about it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call this stream, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. Sorry it's going to be a short one. Sorry it's, it wasn't so hot tonight. Um, we will get ourselves back together for next one, and I do appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out, and we'll see you next time.